Now that we've created our pipe network, what we're gonna go ahead and do now is we're gonna talk about the different ways to modify those networks. There's multiple different ways to modify networks once they've been created. We're gonna talk about three of them. So in order to talk about the first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to navigate towards our sanitary sewer that we just created. We're gonna click on one of the structures and then the contextual ribbon bar comes up for that pipe network. So once you've selected that object, you can go ahead and select structure properties and the structure property properties for this specific structure pop up. So this is the first way that you can edit objects for pipe networks is you can select the individual entity. You can select either structure properties or pipe properties, depending on if you have a pipe or a structure selected, and then you can navigate through this window here. So we have the information where we can change the name of the structure. You can change the style of how it's displayed inside Civil 3D. You can go to the parts properties, and this is where a lot of the nuts and bolts of the changes that you can make for your structure are. So inside of here, you have your reference surface, your reference geometry, so or your alignment. So you can go ahead and add in a reference alignment if you wanted to. So if you forgot to, or if you accidentally selected the wrong one, this is where you would go ahead and select the new one or the one that you wanted to select originally. Then we have our rotation angle for our structure. We have the placement location for our structure. And then we move on to our rim behavior for our structure. So we had set ours to target a structure or a surface. So that's why our automatic surface adjustments value is set to true and our adjustment value is set to zero because we want the top of the structure to touch the surface. If you did not want to do that and you had a specific rim elevation you wanted to hit, all you have to do is select false and then you're going to go to your rim behavior and you can type in the specific rim elevation that you want to have. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate back to true. Then we have the same thing for sump behavior. We have sump depth and control sump by. And so we have depth or a specific elevation. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it as sump depth of zero. Then we have the information for our hydraulic grade line, energy grade line and capacity. So you can input information into here. You can also get information from add-ins to civil 3d for like storm sewer analysis and that kind of stuff so navigating on from there we have our part data so anything that's grayed out you cannot change this is specific to the type of structure we chose then we have a structure type so what is at the top of the structure is it a grade inlet a curb inlet combination outfall or manhole i'm going to go ahead and leave it as none but if i was doing this in design work since I know that's a sewer manhole, I would go ahead and select manhole. So moving on from here, benching method, you can choose your benching method for depressor sump, flat, half bench, full bench, or improved. And then from there, we have the rim to sump height. So this information is calculated based on our sump depth plus our elevation of our rim. And you can modify that, make it deeper if you need to. Then you have your structure information, so your wall thickness. You can drop down and select new wall thickness. You can also choose your floor thickness. You can choose the material that your pipe is made out of or that your structure is made out of. But since this is a specific structure that was inside of our parts catalog, the only option we have is reinforced concrete. Same thing with frames, grates, and covers. You can choose what you want. Most of the time you're going to be here with standard unless you've modified your parts catalog. And then moving on from there, you have your frame height, your frame diameter, your frame length. And a lot of these are specific to the types of structures that you chose. If you had a different structure chosen when you insert it into the drawing, you might not have some of the, the options that are inside of here. And you would just have to be able to go through and navigate them and know the structure that you're working with and change the information. So if, say you didn't have a structure that had a cone to it, it wouldn't have a cone height associated with it. It wouldn't have you know, the barrel, the, it wouldn't have some of the, the information that we're dealing with here. So we're going to go ahead and move on to connected pipes. So these are the pipes that are connected to this specific structure. We have information on what type of pipe it is, what's the inner diameter, what's the invert elevation, the center line elevation, the crown elevation, the slope, and all of this information can be changed to modify the pipes in this window. And then we have rules 
So these are rules that Civil 3D uses to place the structure into three-dimensional space, how deep the structure needs to go, what are maximum drop values, minimum, maximum pipe diameters, that kind of stuff. And you can create rule sets just like you would create a, a display style or anything like that. You got an information tab and a rules tab. You can delete and add rules. If you chose add rules, you can choose the category of the rule, the rule name, um, and then the values associated with that rule. So moving on from there, you can go ahead and cancel out of this and you can also select the pipe and select pipe properties. Same information, you have your pipe properties and your rules. So you don't have a structure, so you can't choose any structure properties, but you do have pipe properties where you have your slopes, your inverts, your pipe connection point locations, and then your hydraulic properties and your part data. So moving on from there, um, the other option that you have available to you when you are working with your pipe networks is to go into edit pipe network. So I selected the structure, went to the contextual tab of the ribbon bar, went to edit pipe network. Inside of here, if you select the grid view, then what you get is your panorama window that shows all of that information that we saw when we went and looked at the structure properties or the pipe properties, but it's all in a stacked table that lets us see everything in relation to each other. And then moving from there, you have two tabs. You have your structures tab and your pipes tab. So you can navigate between the two and choose the options for all of your pipes or all of your structures and then accept them by checking the green check and closing out. And so any changes you would make would then be translated into the drawing. The last option that you have available that we're going to talk about is grip editing. Now, I don't prefer grip editing because you have the potential to lose the links between your structures and your pipes when you do a grip edit. So if I was to grab this pipe and move it, I've now lost my connection to this pipe. And yes, I can come back and I can, you know, click back in and get that link. But uh, I, I find it more powerful to be able to type in the specific elevations and slopes of the pipes than to start grip editing and moving things around. You're going to have that option available to you too when you are doing your profile edits. So when you're doing your profile edits, you will have a grip edit that's available to you. You'll also have the options for structure and pipe properties and edit pipe networks available to you. I just I generally don't use grip edits because of the potential for lost connection.